What up everybody, it's me April, AKA your cosmic homegirl. How are you doing? I'm here to talk about the transit of Venus through the sign of Aries. So uh, Venus is the planet of love and relationships and the pleasures of the five senses and of the physical world and beauty and vanity and all that good stuff. And Aries is a sign that's very bold, it's very daring, it's very out there, it's super exciting and fiery. It's a fire sign. It's in the cardinal element. So it's all about getting things started, getting things done. What happens when we combine the two energies and how is it gonna affect us all? So I'm gonna go through that right now. So I'm gonna tell you how it's gonna affect us as a collective and go through all the signs too and tell you how to fix your sign. First, I just wanted to mention that in the month of March, 2018, I do have a sale for Aries season. Well, Aries season begins because Venus and Mercury are in Aries and then the sun enters Aries on the 20th of March. So Aries is a sign of I am and getting to know yourself and really being in tune with yourself. So I have a sale on natal chart readings. They're normally $80 and actually my price may go up again very soon, but right now they're on sale for $50. $50 no holla. That's such a good deal for a very in-depth astrology reading of your chart, 30 to 60 minutes to where I intuit what your natal chart says about you and you only personally as a unique individual. So this is not con computer generated report or anything now, okay? This is me intuiting you. So it's on sale, $50, go check it out. The link is below to my website, which is indigomoonastrology.com. And also check in the little i button in the corner wherever it's at to see where you can go to my website for that sale and also any other readings that i provide so check it out okay so how is venus and aries gonna affect us all well venus and aries okay so first of all have you guys already seen and don't mind my chipped red nail polish <laughs> but have you guys already seen all the like female empowerment stuff i know there was something that went on at least like a week or two ago, sometime in the beginning of March, I believe, to where there was like, oh, International Women's Day. There you go, to where women were talking about women being empowered and everybody uplifting and supporting each other. Well, that's totally Venus, which rules women in the sign of Aries, which is all about being powerful and strong, okay? So that's something that we uh, tend to see a lot of when Venus is in Aries. Actually, last year, 2017, around this time of year when Venus was in Aries, we saw a women's march to where they were like marching for women's rights, especially to get paid as much as men get paid in the workplace and equal treatment and all that stuff. So Venus in Aries is definitely about female power, but I don't want men to feel like it's only about women, okay? Like Venus is feminine energy and anybody can possess feminine energy, whether you're male or female based on your physical, body or gender or whatever it's just overall like um enjoyment of your world around you in a very aries like way and it's so funny because venus and aries when i think of it as far as love it's very direct it's very straightforward it's very like come here you know i imagine that scene in that movie don't be a menace to where <laughs> he takes home that girl that chick and she's like really shy and all sweet and everything and like okay I, i'm warning you i get a little crazy and he's like oh girl i'm sure you're just over exaggerating and then she turns into this demon it's like come here <laughs> and he's screaming all, ah! and she's just like all wild and like you gonna give it up to me right now i don't remember what she said exactly but anyway that's how i think of venus and aries when i think of like Venus and Aries when it comes to flirting and love, it's, it's very direct and like, just come here, you know? This is what I want. Aries energy is, since it's the first sign on the wheel, it could be very primal and um, a little primitive sometimes, you know? And sometimes it can be like, I want what I want and I'm just gonna grab what I want. So expect people to be a little more direct <laughs> when it comes to the flirting with Venus and Aries and just telling it like it is straight up. There's nothing wrong with that, of course, if it's like wanted and accepted attention like that. But Venus and Aries, yes, it is a time to enjoy things that are very Aries related. Now Aries is ruled by Mars, so it's like we're bringing Mars masculine energy into the feminine. And um, Mars is the red planet, so you will see 
more of people rocking red. I've already had a couple friends text me and be like, you know what, I noticed at work people are wearing more red and women are rocking the red lipstick. I've been rocking this like red makeup look like all the time. All the time during Venus and Aries season, I love it. I love red, the color red, make, and uh, especially with makeup and stuff too, and red lipstick. I've got my NYX um, liquid suede lip color on, not sponsored, but um, this color is called, what the hell? What is this name? Acme Summit, S-O-M-M-E-T, I don't know. I don't know, but it's a very pretty, metallic red okay so yeah red lipstick red nail polish red shirts red shoes it's all about rocking the red when it comes to aries since aries is a sign of i am as i mentioned earlier and it's very in tune with the self a lot of people they want to just be connected to people that they associate with being them like them you know like people that are like them that they consider to be their people uh, that they relate to on a level like well you physically look like me or you know Aries is not known as being a sign of family but all the cardinal signs are to a degree like signs that have to do with others and your relationships to other people Aries is the self but when it comes to relating to others is like others that are like you you know that's who you feel comfortable with and so a lot of people may get more in touch with like their heritage or their roots or yeah maybe family not necessarily in like the lovey-dovey way but it's just like i want to be around people like me type of thing pretty much basically the energy of aries really knows what it wants out of love out of life out of enjoyment so we may be like speaking up a little bit more about what we want if if the restaurant it brings you your plate and the food order isn't right like you may be, be like okay you know what this isn't what i wanted can you please take it back and give me what i want really more like direct with venusian things aries is pretty impulsive too so people may have a tendency to be more impulsive when it comes to love and relationships and shopping and stuff like that too impulse shopping yeah i can see with venus and aries when it comes to yeah love like falling in love the thing about aries and venus in aries especially is the thrill of the chase like you may feel more like your heart is pumping with like you know, you want to chase somebody down. You want to hunt your prey down. You know, like I said, Aries energy, it can be kind of primitive, like back in the primitive days when you had to hunt your prey down or when a man wanted a woman, they just snatch her up by her hair and just drag her. I want woman now, snatch her up. And she'd be like, all right, cool. You know, <laughs> I'm not saying everybody's gonna act like cave people or anything like that, but it's very primal. So yeah, if you really want somebody, you may go after them, you want to chase them down. But the thing about Aries is it can get easily bored after the chase is over, after it's already caught its prey. So you need to be careful with that if you're single and if you're dating or whatever. And also as quickly as Aries can like fall in love is as quickly as it can fall out of love and be like, okay, on to the next prey that I'm gonna hunt down. Like that over there looks juicy, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna go chase after that. So that's something to be mindful of when Venus is in Aries as well. On March 13th, Venus will make a square aspect to Saturn. And this actually can be felt a few days before and a few days after the 13th. And what this means is Venus and Saturn are having like this kind of harsh and intense conversation with each other. Saturn is a planet of restriction and it's in Capricorn, which could be like a mean old man, like a grumpy grandpa, like a old dictator type of figure you know that just says no to everything and they're kind of stuffy that's saturn's energy like humanized if that's a word and then aries is like i just want to go after what i want i'm just gonna do what i want I just go after what i want and not really think about the consequences i just want to just do i just want to do just jump and fly and just do and i don't want to have to worry about anything else and if i bump my head about my head and then I'm, i'll learn and then maybe i'll move on to the next thing you know venus and aries just really wants to take action and saturn slows it down venus square saturn venus does rule money and love and everything so people can be asking each other these questions about love or money with this transit so when it comes to love uh there can't be a frustrating energy in the air with in regards to relationships, especially for people ruled by Venus, which are Tauruses and Libras, either your sun, sun, moon, or rising sign. This can be asking questions about the long term because uh, Aries is impulsive, but Capricorn, where Saturn is at, is not impulsive. It's about planning things out 
and, and being here for the long run and being solid and secure. So a Venus square Saturn transit could be not so frustrating, but it can be about like planning for the future, money wise, you know, making a solid, um, a uh, path to follow in order to achieve financial stability or more financial stability and also yeah with relationships it could just be people asking like yo so like what's our status like what are we like you know what i mean like are we just seeing each other are we just talking or are we really a thing that's going to be here for the long run are you a ride or die or are you for right now you know just let it let me know let me know a answer me honestly and so we could be asking each other these questions also there could be a frustration with money like where saturn dries things up and venus wants things to be lush and abundant so it could be some people seeing their bank accounts a little dry to be honest you know around the 13th of march but if your bank account is dry your pockets are empty or whatever there's nothing but lint and tumbleweeds falling out of those mugs what you can do and what you should do is think about why 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 do i have this financial drought and what can I do to get myself out of it and make things more abundant again? What plans do I have? So that's Venus square Saturn on the 13th. On the 28th, this is when Venus comes into a conjunction with Uranus. Yo, let me tell you, this energy is totally different from Venus square Saturn, okay? Because it's more spontaneous. It's when I think of anything conjunct Uranus, I think of like explosions, right? I think of like electric shocks and sparks flying everywhere and stuff like that, because that's exactly what happens. Uranus rules electricity and it rules things that are sudden and shocking happening that are unexpected out of the blue, you know? And so little Venus, she's just like, la 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 la, innocent. And then she comes in contact with Uranus and he zaps her and she's like, whoa. So let me tell you what can happen with this transit. You can have something suddenly change when it comes to your status with love or with money. It could be either good or bad. It depends on you, your chart, where Aries at is in your chart, where this is happening. And so Venus conjunct Uranus can be a shocking, sudden attraction to somebody. I've seen and felt that happen many times okay i'm talking about to where you actually like you touch someone's hand you don't know them and then it's like bzz, whoa like who are you all of a sudden hello mr stranger man it can be also like someone that you've even been around for a long time and suddenly like you get this shocking feeling of like oh my gosh i think i may actually like them but what you need to be careful of is just like Aries, as quickly as Aries stuff happens is as quickly as it can end and they can be over it. With Uranus, as quickly as a love affair starts is as quickly and abruptly as it can end. So if you're dating, if you're single and you're meeting people, or even if you're not single and meeting people and you're being naughty, you need to be mindful of this. This is not usually something that can stick when you meet or start something with someone under this, this kind of transit. What it is good for is, hey, if you wanna have no judgment, no hate, okay, if you wanna have a little fling or something, as long as you are, you know, in a, the type of relationship that allows for that, okay, no creeping or anything, but if you are able to, you're open to dating, to meeting new people, to having like just a quick little experience with somebody or a flirtation or something and then move it along, hey, a Venus conjunct Uranus transit is perfect for that type of a setup. Also, if you are in a relationship, you want something new, fresh, exciting with your partner, this is a good time for you guys to get a little experimental with stuff. You know, try some new things, throw some new sparks back in the game, you know what I mean? Some people may experience a feeling of some wanting something new and it's just so strong and intense that they break things off suddenly with a partner. You can see sudden breakups with the Venus and Uranus transit, but even those may not last very long. You know, even those may be just like, spur of the moment hey i hate you like all right peace out bye and then like the next day they're like i'm sorry like can we work this out you know showing up at your door crying <laughs> please <laughs> stuff like that can happen with this transit too when it comes to money you may see money just suddenly psh, wow like there's a charge that you weren't expecting pop up or it could be a sudden windfall of money too especially for certain signs that have their money houses hit by 
Venus and Aries, which I will go through right now in a second. So speaking of the signs, let's go through them really quick and I'll let you know um, where Venus and Aries is lighting up your world, okay? Putting some spontaneity and some spunk in your life. So for Aries people, it's in your sign, boo-boo, okay? So anytime Venus is in your sign, you should be feeling good. You should be feeling beautiful, gorgeous, attractive, handsome, fly, whatever word that you use about your appearance like you just feel like if your appearance isn't tight you know if it isn't like to your liking well you're gonna want to do stuff about it so a lot of aries people may be doing extra shopping getting their hair did toes did manicure going and buying new shoes getting anything like work done you know aries rules the head and the face so some people may be going to get a little work done to make themselves feel better about their appearance you may feel a little bit sweeter and nicer than usual and i know aries people are usually kind of rough okay <laughs> you guys are some rough people that could just be rah like in your face but venus makes you a little bit more considerate of others a little bit softer in demeanor and maybe wanting love a little bit more too. You'll be really on the on the prowl for Aries people. Wanting some of that Venus, you know, from somebody else. Like just experiencing life, okay, in the physical world. Eating more, wanting to go out and just like indulge. It's a very indulging energy. So yeah, Venus in your sign, it, just enjoy it. Enjoy it to the fullest because she doesn't stay there long, okay? She's only there through the 31st of March, so enjoy a little venus time with somebody else or even solo to be like you know what this is me this is who i am and i am proud to be me okay and i am beautiful okay look at me that's what venus energy can do when it's in your sign so taurus is venus and aries is in your 12th house the 12th house is a little more of a quiet area of your life it's solitude it's a connection to spirit a connection to in the unseen world, a connection to art, a connection to water, a connection to animals. Anything that's very chill and relaxing is the 12th house. So Tauruses, you'll feel a little bit more chill. You'll feel like being a little bit more under the radar. And this is your ruling planet. So wherever your ruling planet travels, you're going to feel that energy a lot. Okay, a lot. So you will feel more like, well, I just want to chill at home. I just want to as if Taurus doesn't do that enough, right? But I just wanna kind of, you know, maybe be solo, enjoy some time um, doing some art, watching some movies, reading some books, listening to music, zone out into my own world and just tune everybody else out. It's the house of rest and relaxation. So Taurus is, yeah, you may feel a little bit more easily tired when Venus is in your 12th house. You may feel like even if you are in a relationship with somebody, you just wanna be low key with them. You know, you just wanna not really go out as much even with another person. Just spend time in your own little world, in your own little fishbowl with another person. When it comes to money, which Venus also rules, well, the 12th house can rule losses sometimes. So Taurus is especially. You need to be careful not to lose your money, not to, not to lose your debit card like I've already done and I'm a Taurus son. <laughs> uh, don't lose track of your money and stuff. Oh my gosh, I, it's very easy to do when Venus is in the 12th house. You just don't really want to be associated too much with pra the practical world. Um, you want to enjoy time just outside of that away from all of that it's a good time to vacation when venus is in the 12th house especially around the ocean around a body of water okay and also taking taking those extra long showers or those baths oh my gosh so i'm a taurus sun and i went to lush the other day and i bought a bath bomb and i'm like yo it's about time i enjoy one of those like really relaxing baths with candles and a bath bomb that smells good makes your skin feel luxurious you'll want to indulge in all of those things also meditation healing with crystals anything that that's around that area of like you know spirituality and the the mind body soul connection um you'll feel much more connected to and indulgent in during this time so gemini gemini sun moon are rising venus and aries is going to be in your 11th house and this is friends this is like a really social area of life so gemini you're a social creature already you're a social butterfly you know fluttering around from one friend to the next friend to this person that person that person so you will feel 
in your element, you'll feel like socializing and socializing more like in groups too, especially groups of people that either they're friends or they're acquaintances or people that you network with, you guys share a common interest. You'll want to spend more time amongst those groups of people. Also the 11th house is social media. So you will have more of a, a positive uh, feedback from others on social media. So if you are a Gemini who does some networking on social media for business, you can have a better chance of maybe making some money off of it, which Venus does rule money. So making money, making more sales, making more contacts, um, more connects with people. They'll just see you in more of a pleasant light. You'll give off more of a pleasant energy amongst groups of people. And Venus in the 11th, it could just be so simple as, you know what, I'm gonna hang out with my friends. We're gonna go out to eat. We're gonna, you know, you're just craving the energy of friends a lot more. They may be contacting you a lot more because also Mercury is here, which I'll do a separate video for Mercury in the 11th. But yes, they'll be contacting you. You may have some blasts from the past with friends, you know, so it's a really good time to like reconnect or just connect in general with um, people that you really adore being around. So Cancer, Sun, Moon, or Rising. Venus in Aries is going to be in your 10th house. So listen, Cancer, this is your time. This is a time to make a really good impression upon higher ups, upon managers, supervisors, bosses, whoever, CEOs, like really making a good impression. That way you can maybe possibly get a raise or something because you know, you do have some energy that's other energy hanging out there in the 10th house. So this is like a really good time to be seen in a positive light amongst um, those people who are in charge, who are authority figures. And also this is the house of the public. So you're another sign that if you wanna make a good impression publicly, that means even on social media, you can really take advantage of Venus's energy. So put out some creative projects if Venus is creativity, so you can put some creative projects out, have a better, a better response to them. As far as enjoyment, the 10th house is, is kind of like living it up because you feel like you worked so hard to achieve and therefore you want to enjoy the very best, the top. It's at the very top of your chart. So you want to be at the top when it comes to how you're spending your money, how you're spending your time, your free time outside of work, even enjoying yourself. So you could be wanting to go to those fancy Grey Poupon restaurants, okay? Buying those name brand material items to really make yourself feel like you are getting what you deserve for all that you do for work or whatever in life. And yeah, you just want the good stuff, the good stuff out of life. And that's either together or like with another person or even solo. Speaking of love, when Venus is in the 10th house, you'll want to feel, you'll want to feel like you're a power couple with somebody if you are in a relationship like you want to be like a jay-z and beyonce and i know it's so like oh people are so tired of hearing about jay-z and beyonce but i just use them as a as an example because they're like one of the most well-known couples okay power couple you'll want to be that with your partner and so any way that you guys can feel that way or get there like you're going to be thinking about that you're going to be going after that so for leo sun moon or rising venus and aries is going to be in your ninth house this is a fun fun exciting area of life that's highlighted for you guys right now you guys are so lucky so the ninth house is travel and its experiences okay i'm talking about like brand new life experiences that really open your mind okay that means that's why we say the ninth house is travel and education well it, it does rule those things so you can have that area highlighted and some of those themes brought up of like maybe doing well in school if you're in school you know because venus is a benefic that means it's a very positive energy that's brought to that area so yeah maybe doing better in school maybe finding love you know somewhere at school with somebody get you a little college boo or whatever but also it can be life experiences in general okay it doesn't have to be those two things it could be like anything that you feel broadens your horizons personally if you've never done this that or the other like you'll want to explore and get out and do those things that are exciting that get your heart pumping and make you feel like you're so excited and grateful to even be alive okay yes honey the ninth house okay it is so 
positive of an area of life. So you will be feeling like that positive motivational speaker type of person. Hopefully you're not gonna be annoying people, Leo, okay? With like, oh my God, life is so great and awesome. And like mine is, so yours should be too. So like, you know, preaching at people, telling them how they can get their life like yours. Try to avoid that to an annoying degree, but being an inspirational person to let others know, to show others like the good life, you know, like how to get out there and be adventurous, how to go after your goals and stuff. You'll be enjoying that so much more. Um, but with Venus is in the ninth house, the enjoyment thing is usually, yeah, getting out of town or something, traveling, uh, whether by yourself or with friends or with a boo, it doesn't matter. Venus in the ninth house is, the foreign, enjoying the foreign. So you may get you a little foreign boo, or you may want to enjoy just stuff like foreign foods, foreign culture. Where I live, there's always a lot of cultural festivals this time of year. There's like a Hawaiian festival, um, like all these different festivals that go on because the weather's usually pretty nice. So if you're a Leo, yes, get out and enjoy some stuff like that. Enjoying nature, enjoying hiking, stuff like that. Uh, this Venus transit will be, bring so much more of it to your life. So next is Virgo, Sun, Moon, or Rising. Venus in Aries is gonna be in your eighth house. And the eighth house is a little bit of an intense energy. And I know Virgo's like rolling their eyes, like oh, we never have anything positive in life. Yes, you do, okay? Because just wait till Taurus season. You guys will have all this exciting ninth house stuff popping off just like Leo does right now. So, but before you get to that, you gotta get through the depths of the eighth house, which can be kind of dark, murky waters. Yes, it can be. It can bring out some stuff sometimes that's not very pretty, but it's just every year around this time, you have to go through it. So uh, Venus in the eighth, it can bring up some stuff about relationships and love that, yeah, you have to kind of, you stashed away in your subconscious mind and you buried it away and now you have to come back and like, face it again, you know, like if you had any traumatic experiences with relationships, love or whatever, any eighth house type of stuff in the past, you know, you may be faced with it. Um, it's especially love because this is Venus that we're talking about here, but there are some good things to Venus in the eighth. Okay. I have seen, I have seen and experienced Venus in the eighth, the eighth house is loans and it's credit cards. And it is money that you receive other than from other people. So you can receive maybe a raise in your credit limit if you have credit cards or you can get approved for a loan easier, approved for a credit card easier. You can have people pay you back. Like people that owed you money from the past, you can have them actually, hey, you know what Virgo, I borrowed like $50 from you three months ago and I know I've been ducking and dodging and stuff, but you know what, here I am because it's tax season and I have the money now, so bing, here you go. <laughs> so you can have like money just pop up that is received from other resources other than working. You can also want to experience love and intimacy in a very deep way that's not superficial at all. And really get down to the soul of you, of you and another person. It's, it's like the real love, like asking the questions to another person that are um, much more deep, you know? Like, who are you really? What's really in your heart and like, you know, wanting to get, wanting to peel all the layers away when it comes to love. So that can actually be kind of exciting for Virgos. So Libra, Sun, Moon, or Rising, how is Venus and Aries affecting you? Well, this is in your seventh house. So Libra, this is your home territory. You guys are the seventh sign. The seventh sign, Libra, and the seventh house both rule relationships. So this is home base for you, and this is your ruling planet too. Venus rules you as well as Taurus. So wherever it transits, you're gonna feel it extra, okay, extra strong. So Venus in the seventh, prime time for Libras to get out there to, to date, to look for love, you know what I mean? Even more than you usually do. You'll be craving that partnership even more than usual, like so strongly, fiercely craving that partnership. So that means even like, you know how Libras, like to they don't even like to go to the store by themselves <laughs> they don't like to like do a lot of stuff alone they like to have somebody there with them to talk to and be like what do you think and should i buy this i don't know what do you think so you guys are going to be in that mode like 10 times more than usual it can be a good time to actually yes get out there flirt a little bit more meet more people and it doesn't have to always lead to like the one 
You know, a lot of Libras are always looking for the one. It doesn't have to lead to that. It could just be flirting, hanging out, just enjoying the, the company of other people in general. So that can mean dating. It can also mean friends or whatever. But you will be getting a lot more attention, Libra. Let me tell you, Venus in your seventh house is others. It's the house of others. And Venus is very like beautiful, attractive energy. So they will be seeing you as being even more attractive than usual. And you'll be like looking at them like that too. Like, wow, like look at all these cuties coming out of the woodworks all of a sudden. Like, what am I going to do? And you know, Libras, you guys are not the best with making decisions. So you're going to be like, I can have him over there, him over there, or her over there, her over there. Like, what do I do? You're going to be balancing them scales with all these options. So... Hopefully that's how this transit is working out for you guys. If you're in a relationship, it's just a, a, a very great energy that softens things up to make you really nice towards your partner, um, much nicer than usual, and they'll see you in more of that light too. And you guys will just want to spend a lot more time together. So it's very beautiful. So Scorpio, Sun, Moon, or Rising, Venus and Aries is in your sixth house. So this is not the most fun area of life either, but it is going to beautify this area, which is really kind of like, usually like dull and boring. I mean, it's work, it's about work. And I mean, if you enjoy your work, Venus in the six will make you enjoy it so much more. So, it, but it's just like, it doesn't bring excitement necessarily, but it can bring you more positivity when it comes to your job. Enjoying your job, having people more nice to you within the work that you're doing, especially if you work with clients or customers or the public in any type of way. Also your coworkers, they may see you in more of a positive light, want to connect with you, want to bring you food or take you out to lunch, or buy you little gifts, you know, give you recognition at work. It'll just make your work environment so much more pleasant. The sixth house, it also rules health. So when it comes to health, Venus in this house, it could do either or, like good or bad. The good is it can make you more focused on your health, especially for the sake of vanity okay i'm talking about like your looks like buying some new like facial creams or moisturizers you know trying out some products that enhance your health like for the sake of beauty like the beauty and the health of your skin or your hair or whatever and be active and aries is a very active energy for the sake of looking good, like feeling good on the inside, being healthy, but also looking good physically too. Now on the negative side, Venus is like sweets and like all the rich, yummy stuff that we love, but it may be terrible for us. And the sixth house can also rule habits as well as health. So you guys can easily fall into some habits sixth house of eating more sweets and indulging which is venus so you'll need to you know watch out for that but all in all yes it could be good for either work or health that's going to be the focus for scorpio so sag sagittarius sun moon or rising venus being in aries is in a fun place for you too all the fire signs you guys are just like lit up right now in such a beautiful way so this transit is happening in your fifth house which is romance which is fun which is creativity which is dating okay having a lot of self-esteem having a lot of confidence within yourself you know that's where sag is going to be having this beautiful beneficial energy so sages if you are single oh let me tell you they'll be flocking they will be flocking to you, Sag. They will. Yes, they will. Because Venus rules love and beautiful energy and attractiveness. So you'll be attracted to the dating world, okay? If you put yourself out there into it. If you are not single, you're already partnered up with somebody, you have somebody at home, well, guess what? You're going to crave going out on more dates with them. So you need to tell them to get their ass up off the couch, okay? Because you're a Sag, number one. You guys have to get out. You can't stay cooped up. Number two, especially during a fifth house transit, you guys need to be having this energy put into romance and fun that's exactly what you'll want that's exactly what you'll be going after the fifth house is also children being childlike too you know sag can relate to being childlike and having that little peter pan syndrome you guys have <laughs> to where you don't really like to grow up and do a lot of like responsible things you just really love to have fun and be adventurous nothing wrong with that so you will be craving that so much more and if you do have kids you'll be wanting to spend more time with them maybe spoil them maybe get down and be a kid 
right along with them and just really have a good time. So Capricorn, Sun, Moon, or Rising. Venus and Aries is in your fourth house, so that means family home so you'll be wanting to beautify which is venus your home which is the fourth house you'll have better relationships with family members you'll maybe want to spend more time with family have them come over have a little barbecue you know what i'm saying have a little kickback throw a couple back with your your uncles your cousins whoever and just spend some really good quality time enjoying the presence of family enjoying the presence of people that you're familiar with and comfortable with and secure with and then yeah it'll you want to make your home more beautiful you want to make it your sanctuary like for real for real like decorating it'll be hard to stay out of the stores like home depot or target or pier one imports or wherever you go whatever ikea i don't know where you guys shop there's so many people that watch but you'll want to be in those places capricorn to make your home beautiful comfortable and look really nice and um, feel really nice too and yeah you may have more cravings for rich food okay which venus rules rich food the fourth house also means nourishment and nurturing through food so you'll want more of that especially if you if you have like a culture or a background that you come from that has specific foods um that are related to it that maybe like your family cooks or people from your homeland and it just really gives you these like feelings of oh yes i'm so in touch with like my culture and everything through this food if you're a capricorn you'll be wanting more of that as well but yeah it's just a really good time to to spend with family and maybe if you don't spend time with family you'll just want to be at home you know just in the presence of your home in your little shell all comfy cozy watching netflix you know just bundled up and in your own little safe secure world so for aquarius this is your third house this is going to be communication this is the people around your way that means people that you see all the time whether it's the grocery store starbucks your job your co-workers whatever you're going to have more pleasant relationships and interactions with those people. This is also the house of siblings, is the third house. So yeah, maybe you might wanna hang out with your sisters, your cousins, your brothers, like whoever. Like you'll want to be in their presence, maybe. <laughs> maybe, because Aquarians can be a little weird about family. <laughs> so some of you guys will want to be more in the presence of those people. But yeah, it's just getting along, Venus rules, peace and harmony and balance and getting along with people so you'll be getting along with those people better uh, the third house is also neighbors so some of you aquarians may want to spend time with neighbors get together on a little collab you know to have a barbecue or a little hangout or kickback or whatever and just enjoying the presence of those people too when it comes to communication and dating and flirting the third house could be very flirty energy very flirty even with strangers i've noticed that with venus in the third people are so open to communicating with like whomever it doesn't matter so don't get yourself into trouble aquarius if you're in a relationship venus in the third does make you like uberly flirty okay so just be mindful of that but if you're single if nobody's there to be jealous like if you're talking to all these people being a little flirty or whatever yeah enjoy that time so pisces venus and aries is going to be in your second house for pisces sun moon or rising this is the house of earning money it's also the house of uh, enjoying the material world it's normally ruled by venus second house corresponds to the second sign of the zodiac which is taurus and taurus is ruled by venus so when you think second house you think venus like they rule pretty much the same things which can be money your material world especially money that you like i said that you work for you know that you earn at a job and so venus in the second some pisces can see themselves getting a raise some of you guys may feel super duper indulgent though like really indulgent with food and drinks and anything that's like material physical massages i know some pisces that are like talking about getting massages this time of year the second house rules the five senses so does venus that includes the touch so hey if you're not getting that you know what i'm saying like you're gonna be craving it nice touch nice smells i have been addicted i'm a pisces moon so i this is my second house as well and i've been addicted to things that smell nice i usually am anyway but i've been addicted to like 
this nice smelling like body wash that smells like roses and then a lotion that smells like roses and a deodorant that smells like roses like that smell of like flowers and freshness and oh my gosh it's just like indulging in that with venus in the second so also yes you may want to work more to earn more money to accumulate more money and also yeah you can easily come across money with venus in the second house too whether that be gifts or whether that be through work like i said some pisces may get a raise some of you guys may be picking up extra hours some overtime or second job or a creative hobby that you can earn more money from maybe on the side or whatever because venus does real creativity the second house can in a way too Pisces are usually pretty creative people. So any way that you can have more money, more pleasures of the five senses, that's what it's about for Pisces people. So that's it guys for Venus and Aries, this transit that's going on through uh, the 31st of March from the 6th through the 31st of March of 2018. So I really hope Venus and Aries treats you guys well. I hope she's not too much of a cave woman. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Hope she's not too brash and harsh, but you know what? She will help you go after what you want and be strong in sticking to your guns when it comes to that stuff too. So bask in it, enjoy it to the fullest, and I will be back to talk about Venus and Taurus later in the month or maybe in the month of April. Don't forget to hit me up if you would like a reading. My information is below this video and especially my natal chart reading sale going on through the month of March through the 31st throughout Venus and Aries, um, I will be having that sale. So check it out. And I will see you guys in my next video. So thanks for watching and take care. Peace.